Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Rachel Desuma and I'm from Forest Immersion Walks and I'm here today to do nature journaling with you. So um, this event was made possible by Knox Arts and Events as part of the Stringy Bark Festival 2020. And I'd like to start by acknowledging the land that we're meeting on today, where I am up in Fentry Gully. It's the land of the Wurundjeri and the Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation. And I'd like to pay respects to elders past, present and emerging, and acknowledge the ongoing connection to the land and the waterways in this place. Um, and yeah, just send some appreciation and gratitude to Aboriginal people for their custodianship of the land over the centuries, today and into the future. you're on or maybe you could ask an adult that's there with you maybe they know and so post it below the video I'd love to give up so welcome um, as I said, my name is Rachel Desumer. I'm the founder of Forest Immersion Walks and I offer nature connection and forest therapy walks in the Dandenong Ranges. So in this event, I'm really excited to share with you some of the techniques you can use to draw things in nature. experience with my friend Becky and her son Max and they're going to be in their backyard in their garden and they're going to be joining us in this activity just like you are today. Hi my name's Becky and my name's Max and we're out in our garden today and we're going to show you a special way to explore your garden. So before you go out into your backyard my friend Becky has this special way of exploring the backyard or exploring any nature space and she's going to explain special technique that you can use. This is a way to use our bodies to explore a place with curiosity and we call it body radar. So what I want you to do and Max is going to demonstrate. Okay so just close your eyes for a moment and feel your feet. You may have shoes on but feel the point where your feet meet the earth and listen into your body. Can you feel a pull? Can you feel your body pulling you in a certain direction? Turn your body the way that it wants to move. So if you're feeling a pull, you can turn your body. Now your curiosity is going to pull you in certain directions. So you can start moving now with your eyes open. So open your eyes. And let your curiosity pull you through your backyard. We're going to look for some items for our journaling. Sometimes your curiosity might ask you to look up or look down or look under something. So, yeah, so you're curious. Should you pick that? What do you think, man? What is this? This is a, a part of a... Uh, a leak. What do you think is going to happen with that? You don't think you should? I think that's going to actually become seeds. Yeah. But that's, I can see why you were really curious about that. I guess there's some things in the garden that we wouldn't take. There's only one of them and the plant's putting a lot of energy into that to make seed.
tune back into your curiosity, Mark. It's where it's going to lead. Oh, this way again. This way? Wow, okay. Yeah, well, there's quite a few of them. Do you want to maybe just check in and see if it's okay to take one? So these, this is a uh, dill. And if you if you were here, you'd be able to smell this. It's so delicious. Do you want to? Which were you asking to take, Max? Maybe one of these. They're beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dill. had a chance to go and pick something to draw and so while you're doing that for anyone who's left in the room and still watching or for people who already have their items ready to go I'm gonna do a little pop quiz of things that I've found in my garden and I'm curious to see if you know what they are discovered when I was wandering around in my backyard was some very strange looking hoop and I also noticed that some of my beetroot leaves and broad beans had been eaten by this animal and so I'm curious to know if you can guess who it might be so here's a picture of the poo from this animal and I want you to see if you can guess it might be. So post your comments in the chat and then at the end of the video I'll share with you who's who it was. Great.
So here's my angular onion that I picked from this little bush over here and asked permission first. I checked that there's lots of flowers there so I didn't feel bad about picking this one because there's lots to go around for all the other birds and bees that might want to um, use this plant too. And so yeah, I want to give you a chance to have a really good look at the item that you picked. So look at it up close, notice the tiny details, have a feel of it with your fingers, notice the textures and how it feels, notice how it smells, it smells like onions, and notice if it has a sound. It feels hot and sweet. And it smells like, it sort of smells like honey. What do you see with it? Lots of little flowers. Can you show it to us? Mm, it's so pretty. I want you to imagine that your eyes are like a camera and you're going to take an image of this item that you've chosen and imagine that you can see it even with your eyes closed. So like having a really good close look, take a picture in your mind and then what we're going to do is cover this and see what you can remember from your memory. This is called imprinting the image in your mind. Now you might like to draw some of the other beings that might hang out with this plant, if you like. Who else do you think would spend time with angled onions? Who might come to visit? Maybe you can spend some time looking at the plants in your garden and see who likes to visit them. wandering through my backyard and who do I find here? Who's this? Hey. 
Hey, friend. I got a bit distracted because I got a little spider on my hand here. I don't know if you can see it. It's just crawling up. Hey friends. Can you see a little spider? Yeah, you're hanging on to me with your web. Let's see if you want to hang out in the lavender. There you go. Back out here to have another little closer look at the dill and see if there are any others here with the dill. It looks like something has eaten part of the dill, but there's no evidence. There's something over here. Maybe a, an insect friend in there having a munch. These look like they're finishing up. There is another big dill plant flower over here. Maybe there were some birds sitting above the dill. There's definitely evidence that they've been here. So here I've got curious ant climbing, bee buzzing by, and the angled onion that I've drawn, which smells like onions, and they make me think of spring. A tiny little plant. Then it grew taller and taller with more leaves growing every day until it came up and it was and it started blooming with flowers. After this, if it, I leave it long enough, it will go to seed. It... <laughs> so, 
I've finished my angled onion weed that I picked from the garden and I was just thinking about where it comes from. So I'm going to start to draw where it comes from. So in the ground there's a little bulb and it's got lots of roots and then it sprouts leaves and the leaves grow longer and then it starts to grow flowers and then the flowers get pollinated and then it grows seeds and these seeds fly off and land somewhere new create a new bulb comes down into the earth and then it grows a new plant with new flowers Then what happens? Well, I'm going to take my angled onion, I'm going to chop it up, and I'm going to put it in my dinner. It's kind of inspired by Max. What's going to happen next to the item that you've chosen? So thank you so much for joining me for Nature Journaling and I would love to stay in touch with you so please get onto my Facebook page Forest Immersion Walks Victoria or check out my website www.forestwalks.com.au and this event was made possible by Knox Arts and Events as part of the Stringy Bark Virtual Festival so thank you to Knox City Council for putting this on and for having me here and for um, connecting me with you guys. It's been a pleasure and joy to journal and draw with you all. And I would love to see your pictures and posts below. All right, until next time. Bye for now.